Outdoor dining has made a big impact on New York City restaurants struggling to stay open during the pandemic. And now the Department of City Planning and the Department of Transportation are announcing a citywide engagement process to make outdoor dining structures permanent. Let's talk about that. Today we have with us Emily Weidenhoff, the DOT Director of Public Space. Thank you so much for being with us, Emily. And, and we know right off this is a controversial is issue in some parts of the city. What issues, though, are you looking at? Uh, what do you have to deal with to make these permanent? Absolutely, Dana. As you said, um, Open Restaurants has been um, an incredibly successful program as an emergency response. Really, our goal as we transition out of pandemic response and into a permanent program is to really fine tune the program guidelines and make sure that there's a real clarity mm -hmm. and a focus on safety and accessibility uh, for the program. And, you know, I saw some the other day. I was in the theater district, and some are busy, some are packed, uh, some are not so, some are sticking out, some are more inside, some. I mean, they're just totally uh, different. And also, there are those in neighborhoods who say, this is messing up our traffic pattern. There are rats crawling along here. Uh, some cables, wires are hanging. The electricity, they all seem to have all of those cute little lights. H how are you going to deal with all of those issues? Absolutely. Uh, it's definitely a balancing act. Um, any design on, on New York City roadways, uh, which we all share, uh, is, is always a balancing act. Um, we're really looking to uh, heavily lean on all of the, um, all of the uh, both complaints and successes that we've heard for the program that's been on the ground now for over a year, um, and really engage in a robust dialogue with community boards, um, with restaurant professionals, with all of our city colleagues um, at all you know the other different city agencies that have a lot to worry about in the roadways as well. Um, so really looking to heavily lean in on the experience and what we've learned over the past year, again, to fine tune um, and make the program guidelines um, more contextual. Mm -hmm. Guidelines that really relate to wide streets versus narrow streets, um, things like that can, that can lead to uh, greater success overall. And you, we talk about our restaurants, 10 to 12,000, and just how do you then, you say wide streets or narrow streets, and then, I mean, you can just name so many subsets of, of the issues including in say you have a community where the restaurant is is just the biggest deal but the structure is is a problem and the outpouring of you know don't do this is very huge but the restaurant owner is like i need this please 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 absolutely that is one of the challenges that we're facing real time and so the goal of really developing clear guidelines and clear criteria that focus, again, on safety and accessibility, really being able to uh, carve out space on our streets uh, that works for everyone mm -hmm. and works for the balance and the range of users that will both allow restaurants to operate, but also the rest of the neighborhood to operate right. as well. Because zoning could be an issue too. Jo zoning changes, I mean. Well, so the zoning changes are really to allow restaurants all across the city to participate. No longer are we going to say only certain neighborhoods can participate. Mm -hmm. This is really, um, really an opening. Um, and again, based on the success that we've seen of the program and restaurants really engaging with open restaurants citywide. So help us understand, are all the restaurants engaging with you? and? What do they do at this step in the process? So we know also, I, I, of course, we need to talk about the public input as well. But first, the restaurant owners. Absolutely. Um, so we have great colleagues um, at the Hospitality Alliance um, with uh, the Department of Small Business Services um, and their restaurant team that we've been working with closely over the course of the pandemic program. So we're going to be engaging with groups like that, as well as uh, restaurant owners themselves. Mm -hmm. We have a lot of restaurant partners across the city. So really trying to understand what they need in terms of operations and running a business, um, as well as the, you know, the challenges that they've seen on the ground for a little over a year. 
Um, and then as you say, we are going to be um, engaging with community stakeholders as well. Uh, community boards are obviously a, a, an incredibly important part of the conversation. They hear and aggregate so much of what the community thinks about, um, about programs, but there are lots of stakeholders and that's why we're setting up uh, this robust process that will last for about six months. Of where these, we can... go ahead, of these public where people can speak with you, they can raise their concerns. Yes, and we can be sharing um, our thoughts on and kind of a rough draft of guidelines to really be getting um, very specific feedback from all these different groups. Okay, so uh, the new roadway design website, is that active yet? So our Open Streets, uh, Open Restaurants website is live, um, nyc.gov backslash open restaurants. That is the go-to place to find all of the latest information about the program. Um, and we encourage everyone to keep uh, tuning in there. Um, you'll see some rough uh, bullets about the timeline and some of our goals. And as we, um, build out the process through the fall, you'll be seeing all the details there. So enhancing safe interactions between diners, drivers, cyclists, and pedestrians. Also, obviously, the ADA, American Disabilities Act, uh, all of these rules and regulations, everything has to be open to everybody. Is that a difficult challenge, do you think, for the restaurants? Yes. Absolutely, making sure that these are accessible um, and also the accessibility of our sidewalks with mm -hmm. so many pedestrians um, coming back uh, to the city. Our, our sidewalks are more crowded, so we want to make sure that um, both outdoor dining um, is, is able to thrive, but also that our sidewalks are accessible for all those who need them. Um, and then the, the, one of the last things we'll really be focusing on are the shade structures, making sure that these outdoor dining spaces are comfortable while also, um, you know, having kind of clear visibility, um, clear sight guidelines, sight lines for um, vehicles, pedestrians, cyclists, everyone using our streets. It sounds like uh, the city is, is pretty definite on this is going to work um, everywhere. True. We are. Um, we certainly want to make it as uh, accessible a program as possible, um, and encourage as many uh, restaurants to participate. It's never going to work everywhere. Again, um, it's a it's a real balancing act to make sure that New York City streets work for everyone. Uh, but the goal is to really maximize participation for those who want to participate. Well, we know it's been a tough year and a half. A very tough. Uh, for some more than others, uh, restaurant owners uh, and, and neighborhoods. Uh, Emily Weidenhoff, thank you so much. The DOT Director of Public Space, we appreciate what you said and we will come back to you as the process continues. Thank you so much.